In this video, we're going over how to use the Samsung Galaxy S21 FE for beginners. Welcome back to another video. I'm your tech guide, Wayne. In the video today, we're gonna to be going over how to use the new Samsung Galaxy phone for beginners. And we're gonna just do a quick tour of the phone, where the buttons are, um, to how to navigate the screen, how to download applications, how to sign into your email account, um, how to set up the fingerprint sensor. We're gonna to try to give you a full tour so you know where everything is and you should be ready to use this phone after watching the video. If you find it helpful, make sure you hit that thumbs up, uh, like button down below, and make sure you hit that subscribe button as well to stay tuned for more videos. Let's go ahead and jump right in. Let's start with our tour of the exterior buttons of the phone here. So on the outside, on the right side, you'll find your volume up, volume down, and your power button. Now, just tapping that power button is going to wake up the phone, and tapping it will put it asleep. Keep in mind the phone is not off, it's just asleep right now. If you wanna actually turn it off, you do need to hold down on that power button, and I'm gonna show you a tweak so that it'll be easier to power the phone on and off. So we'll get to that in one minute. Um, at the bottom of the phone here, you'll find a Type-C connector for charging. So if you wanted to buy an additional charger, a car charger, just make sure it is a Type-C charger. And on the left side here, you'll find the micro SD card slot as well as your SIM card slot. So if you have a memory card from an older phone and you'd like to put it in this phone, just grab the SIM tool from the box of your phone and um, grab your uh, memory card and you'll be able to um, just put it in right in that little slot right there, okay? You'll notice on the left side, um, there are no buttons and no buttons at the top of the screen here. Okay, so uh, when your uh, screen is asleep, you can, again, hit that power button to wake it up or you can tap the phone two times and that will automatically wake up the screen. Now we're gonna take our finger, put it on the screen and just drag it up and that's what's gonna allow us to unlock the phone and get to our home screen. Now I mentioned a few minutes ago, um, trying to power the phone off, you need to hold the power button. Now, um, by default, the power button launches the Google, excuse me, the Bixby Assistant. So this little tweak will allow you to change the power button so it can power the phone off. So I'll show you that next and then we're gonna get into how to navigate the screen. So what we're gonna do here, um, swipe down from the top of the screen and swipe down. When I say swipe, just wanna be clear, put your finger at the top and just drag it down the screen. That's how we bring up this menu. And then we're gonna swipe down one more time and that's gonna show us our on-screen power button. So no matter what, you'll always be able to power the phone off by simply tapping this button here but this is also gonna allow us to change our power button settings to make it easier to turn the phone off. So we're gonna tap on side key settings and we're going to come down here and change this from wake to power menu. And now if I hold the power button, it will take us right to our restart screen where I can either power the phone off by tapping this button or I can tap this button to restart the phone. So that's definitely an important tweak to make um, when you set your phone up to make it easier to power the phone on and off. Next, we're gonna move on to navigating the screen. And you've got three buttons on this phone at the bottom to help you navigate. So you have your recent apps, home button, and your back button. Let's start with the home button. So whenever I open one of these little icons, these are what are called apps. Apps is short for application. Think of an application like how computers have programs, phones have applications, and they're, they are abbreviated apps. So when you hear apps, they're just talking about applications. So if I open up the Chrome app or application, it's gonna take me to my web browser where I can browse the internet. And let's say I'm browsing the internet and now I wanna go back to the home screen. I'm gonna use this home button right here to take me back to the home screen. It's just that easy. No matter what you're doing on the phone, tapping this home button is gonna take you back to your home screen. 
Now, one important thing to note is that my Chrome app, the this app right here, just because I go to the home screen, it doesn't mean it's closing the program or the app. It's still open. And if I want to get back to it easily, I can tap on this button, which is the recent apps button. This will show me all of the apps that I recently had open and I can simply just tap on it to go back to Chrome and continue doing what I was doing. So that's what this button does here, the recent apps. It just allows you to see all of the previous programs or applications you had open and you can either go back to them or you can say, well, I'm finished. I don't want to use this one anymore. I can just swipe up and that's how I can close it. This is how you close out all of the applications that are running in the background of the phone to help speed up the phone. So that's um, what the recent apps button does. Next, we're gonna go over what the back button does. Now I'm gonna swipe down from the top of the screen to get to my settings shortcut, this little wheel in the corner. And I'm gonna just demonstrate the back button by going to, let's see, let's go to lock screen. Let's say I select lock screen and then I select wallpaper services. If I want to go back one page, I'm going to tap the back button. Take me back to this page. If I tap it again, it'll take me back another page. And that's all the back button does. It just takes you back one step and it'll take you as far as it can go. And now, now I'm on the home screen of the settings menu. If I hit the back button again, it's going to take me out of settings altogether. So, that's what the set, that's what the back button does. And these are really the three buttons you're going to be using to navigate the phone. Okay. Next we're going to go over, um, how to find all the applications on the phone and also how to download different apps. So, um, by swiping up on the main screen, swipe up, this takes you to what's called your app drawer. You'll notice at the top here, you have, uh, these little white circles here. These are actually folders that some of your apps are stored in. So all your Google apps are going to be in here. These are all the Google apps, your Gmail app, Chrome, which is your web browser, Google maps, YouTube, Google movies, Google photos, all that's going to be in this section here. You have your Microsoft folder, your Samsung folder. If you have a Samsung watch, you'll use the galaxy wearable app. This is the app that will allow you to link it up with your watch and, um, program it Samsung TV smart things allows you to control your TV from your phone and all your other apps are going to be in this section right here now if you want to download a new app like a game or uber or just a specific app you can tap on Play Store now the Play Store is where you download uh, just about everything you're going to use for your phone so uh, again, if there's a, a game or an app that you want, it all happens in here. Now, if you tapped on the Play Store icon, what I just tapped right now, and it didn't take you to this screen, let's say it took you to another screen that's asking you to sign into a Google account. I just wanted to explain that really quickly. Um, you do need to have a Gmail account or a Google account in order to sign in to buy applications. Even if you only want free applications, you still have to have a Google account. It's all tied to your account. So if you don't have one or you haven't signed in on the phone yet on this screen, all you'll need to do is simply enter your, uh, your Gmail address and your password. Now, if you have one great enter it now, if you forgot the password, click on the forgot password button and it'll walk you through a few steps on how to recover your password. And if you don't have a Google account at all, maybe you have an AOL or Yahoo, but you don't have a, a Gmail or a Google account, you'll need to go to the bottom of the screen and tap on the create account button. And it's really quick. It's going to just uh, uh, walk you through some steps to create your Gmail, uh, ask you like maybe five or six questions, um, set a password. And after that, it'll set up your account and then you'll be able to go to the play store and then download applications. So, I just wanted to touch on that because some people, um, you know, they're not on this screen. You're on the Google account screen. So I want to make sure you know what to do. Let's move on now. So let's say there's a specific application you want for your phone. Maybe, um, you want to download, um, 
what's that? Uh, maybe you want to download uh, DoorDash because you want to order food. You can simply, um, in this little box at the top here, sorry, I'm jumping ahead. You tap in the box at the top that says search for apps. And this is where you can type in what type of application you're looking for. Or maybe you want just a simple game. Whatever it is, you can either type it or you can tap the microphone and you can just say it and it will search for you. Sudoku. So in this case, I said the game I wanted and it's bringing up all the Sudoku apps. Let's say I want to try this one here. I can just tap on it and notice this little green button says install. All I have to do now is just tap the green button and it will begin to install the application on the phone. Now, if that green button doesn't say install, if it has a price, let's say it says a dollar or five dollars, then, then that's your way of knowing that it's not a free application that you do have to pay for it. So just keep in mind, if you see any like that, you will maybe need want to go back, use your back button and try to find another application that's free. I always say try to download the free ones first and then um, if you don't like those, then you get a paid one, but don't start with a, with a paid one. If you notice this one here, this one's actually $3.99. So I would say not to download that one yet. I would say try to find a free one uh, on the list. Now that our app is downloaded, we're gonna hit the home button here and I'm gonna swipe up and swipe to the left and this is where our app has been downloaded. So if you wanna play it, we're gonna just tap it right from there and now we can start our Sudoku puzzle. So that is a, a brief overview of how to download an application. You literally just need to go to the Play Store and just do a search. You can also come in here and you can um, just look through, browse. At the bottom, you'll have categories. So games, this will only show you games. You have apps, you'll have special offers as well. Movies, there's a movie tab if you wanna download movies here and books. These are all the different things you can download from the Play Store. Now moving on, next I'd like to go over what is called your notification panel, because you need to understand how um, information comes through your phone and also um, your shortcuts on how to turn certain things on on the phone. So bring your finger to the top of the screen and swipe down. And this will bring up what is called the notification panel. The notification panel is where you'll have one switches to turn on and off certain uh, settings of the phone. And at the bottom here, you'll have your notification section. So for example, if you get a new email, it's gonna show up just like this. It'll say Gmail. It'll give you a preview of your new email, of your new uh, email that has come through. And I can just tap here. It'll take me right to my Gmail account and then I can see my new uh, emails that have come through, just like that, okay? What you'll also see in that section is a text message. Um, communication from other apps that you have. If you have um, like a, a DoorDash or an Uber uh, and they're trying to communicate with you, they'll send you notifications that you'll be able to check in this section. So that's why this section is so important. Now at the top here, you'll find these switches, like I was saying, that will control different functions of your phone. So you wanna turn on your flashlight, tap on the flashlight button, and now your camera flash turns into a flashlight. If you get on an airplane, you've got your airplane mode. You also have your Wi-Fi shortcut right here. So if you wanted to connect to your home Wi-Fi network, one, you wanna make sure this is lit up in blue. And the way you do that is just by tapping the icon. Tapping it once will turn it off. If it's gray, that means it's turned off. And once I tap it again, now it's blue. And that's how I know that my Wi-Fi is turned on. And if I wanna to connect to a network, I just need to put my finger on the button and hold. So just like this. It's gonna take me right to the Wi-Fi shortcut in the settings. And now I can see all the available networks in this case, you would want to look for your home network or the specific network you're trying to connect to. For example, if you're at Starbucks, it should say Starbucks. You would tap, let's just say this said Starbucks. You would tap on it, and then you'd have to enter the password. You know, 
coffee. And then you would hit the connect button and that would allow you to connect to that network. So that's how easy it is to connect to Wi-Fi and using that shortcut up here, that's the easiest way to do it. You'll have your volume button here. So if you want to put your phone on vibrate, you know, tap this one time. Now it's on vibrate, it won't make any noise. And if I tap it again, it's on silent. So it won't vibrate and it also won't, won't ring. And when I tap it again, if it's blue and you just see the speaker, that means that your sound is on and you'll be able to hear if any new, someone calls or texts you if you get a notification. You also have your Bluetooth uh, shortcut right here. Again, blue means it's on and I can just hold down on it to go right to the settings and look for new Bluetooth devices. Now, when you open it initially, it's gonna begin searching for new devices, but after a while it will stop searching. So keep in mind, you may have to tap the button up here. It says stop now, but this button is gonna change and it'll say scan. And when it says scan, it means you need to tap it to tell the phone, hey, start looking for new Bluetooth devices so that it can connect. Once you see it in the list, you'll just tap on it and that's how you connect to a Bluetooth device. Keep in mind some devices you will need to put into a pairing mode first before it'll show up on that list. And for that, you'll have to consult the manual of that device. Next, I'm going to show you, uh, there's one more thing in this section here, which is, so you swipe down one time to see this view and I can swipe again to see more options. So you can see your uh, hotspot. If you wanna use your phone as a mobile hotspot, you can turn it on here. Power saving mode is here, your GPS. If you wanna turn off your GPS, just tap that button and now your GPS is no longer on. And that's a quick tweak, quick tweak to, um, quick tweak to make your battery run a little bit longer is not having your GPS on all the time. You also have your shortcut here to control the brightness of your phone. So by dragging this up, it'll make it brighter and dragging it down makes it darker. We'll keep it a little bit brighter for the rest of the video. You can also swipe left and find another list of more options. Your QR code scanner is gonna be right here if you just scan a QR. Dark mode, this is a great setting that will change your whole background from white to dark. Do not disturb, there's so many things in here. I encourage you to come to this section and just play around to see all the options, but I wanna make sure you know how to get to it and that's why I'm being so thorough here. All right, so that is the notification panel. Um, so next I wanna go over how to sign into your personal uh, email account. So you might have your Gmail on there just so you can download apps, but you may have another email address that you wanna sign into and I'm gonna show you how to do that next. What we're gonna do is in this folder on the front that says Google, tap on the folder, tap on Gmail. Now one important thing to note is that the Gmail app does a lot more than what people understand. So with the Gmail app, you can sign into other accounts that are not Google. That's one of the cool things about this app. So let me show you how to do that. So we're gonna tap on the icon in the corner here. Just, there should be a little circle right next to the search. We're gonna tap on add another account. And this will bring up the list of all the uh, accounts that are supported within the Gmail app. So if you have an Outlook, Hotmail, Live, a Yahoo, or an Office 360, you can sign into any one of these just by tapping on the appropriate selection and entering your information. So um, that's how easy it is to sign into another email account. On my personal phone, I'm signed into 10 different email accounts. And it's all because the Gmail app supports you signing into multiple accounts. Now, one important thing to note, some of you may have an AOL or an sbcglobal.net, a lot of these older type email accounts, and you may not see it in the list here. So I'm gonna show you a, a trick on how to find another application that will allow you to sign into those email accounts and check them on your phone. We're gonna hit the home button, go back to the Play Store, and make sure you're at, at the bottom here, you go to apps. And at the top here, where it says search for apps, just tap in the box, and you're gonna type in 
the end of your email account. So here's an example of what I mean when I say that. I'm gonna hit the button here, tap the at symbol, and I'm gonna type in at sbcglobal.net. And then I'm gonna hit search. Now what it's gonna bring up is a list of all the apps that, that will support that email type. So any one of these applications you can download and it will allow you to sign into your sbcglobal.net email. Some of the best ones on this list, um, this one right here is really good. The Samsung email app is also really good. In fact, we would just tap on it here, tap install, and that's how easy it is to download that application. And then you can go in and then you can sign into that other email type. So that is the process. Um, and you should be able to, um, again, get all your emails now that you go to that app and just sign into it. As a reminder, you'll need to swipe up and make sure you're in the app section. And then you'll need to tap on the email app here. And that's where you'll sign into that uh, account type. Okay. All right. Next, uh, I want to show you just a few more things. So first, I want to show you how to make a call. And next, how to send a text message. To make a call, you're going to tap on the green phone button. And you'll need to first make sure you're in the keypad section. You'll have three options down here, contacts, recent, and keypad. And under keypad, you're gonna just type in the phone number. I'm gonna type it fast, but um, again, feel free to type at whatever speed you want when you're gonna make your call. So I'm gonna type in the phone number and I'm just gonna tap the green button here to start the call. Now I don't have service on this phone, so it's not gonna actually make the call, but that is the process, is just typing in the number, tapping the green button. Now, if you want to send a text message, tap on the message button at the bottom. And then you'll have a little bubble in the bottom right corner. Tap on the bubble. And we're going to type in our phone number. So that's the first thing you do is type in the phone number of the person you want to text. And then hit next. Now, if you have phone numbers saved in your phone, Instead of typing the phone number, you can simply just start typing the name of the person and then it should bring up their number in this section up here. Next, we're going to tap on the, the box that says enter message. And here I can type my message. Hi, how's your day going? Okay, and then I'm going to tap on this little button here to send it. Now that's how easy it is to send a text message. Now, if you want to attach or picture or take a picture and send it to them, you would use the two buttons on the left here. So this button, the first one is if you already have a picture saved in your phone, you can just tap this and at the bottom, it'll bring up a list of all of the pictures you've taken. And you'll just select a picture and it'll add it to your text and then you'll hit send. You can also tap the camera button if you'd like to take a picture right now, I can just simply snap a picture. And then it's going to show me the picture. I'm going to press OK. And it's attached because it'll have a little number above the top. And I'm going to hit the little circle to send it. And that's how you send uh, a picture to someone in a text message. All right, for our next section, we're going to be going over how to use the camera. Um, you'll see your camera button in the bottom right corner right here, red button. And um, when you first open the camera, it's going to look like this. It's going to ask you if you want to turn on your location tag. And all that's going to do is um, when you take pictures in different locations, it will group them by location. I tend to not use this feature, so I hit cancel, but if you'd like your photos grouped by location, hit the turn on button. Now, um, 
This is how you control the different settings on your camera. So photo is the main, you know, the default section and that's how you just take pictures. So it's gonna always start in the photo section. You'll just tap the white button to take pictures. And if you wanna zoom, you can hit the, these two buttons on the left and right. You'll see 0.5 if you wanna zoom out or the three if you wanna zoom in closer. You can also um, hit the little buttons at the bottom here to zoom in more. So I can hit 20 times zoom, 30 times zoom. So when you go to the left, it's zooming out. And as you go to the right, it's gonna zoom in more. And if you wanna bring that menu back up, you'll just need to tap on one of the buttons first and then go along the row there. You can also zoom with your fingers just by pinching like this. And then next, so that's the zoom. If you wanna take a video, you just need to tap the video button here or slide over and you'll notice your button changes to a little red circle in the center. And now this is how we take a video. You'll see it counting up at the top here. If you wanna turn on a light for your video, you could just tap this and now you'll have uh, some light to go along to make your video a little bit brighter. And when you're finished recording, just hit the stop button here. You can also pause the video for a short time if you want. And while the video is recording, you can hit the camera button here to take st still shots while it's recording the video. Okay. If you hit more on the more side here, you'll see you have all these other camera options from a panoramic video food mode, night mode, if you're taking a picture at night and you wanna capture as much light as you can. All these other really cool options here. So play around with those when you have free time to learn how they work. Now, after you take a picture, if you wanna see the picture, you need to tap uh, this little circle here. It'll take you to your uh, camera gallery and you can swipe through and see all the pictures that we've just taken. You can hit the heart to favorite them and the heart will actually put them in their own um, in their own favorites folder so I can go through and say oh I like I don't like these I do like this video I'm gonna hit the heart and that will save it as the um, in that favorites folder you'll notice right now our video is playing but we can't hear any of the volume if you tap on this little button here it'll unmute it so you can hear it while the video is playing now we can hear when I was talking for that section. Hit our back button here. The back button will take you back to the camera so you can continue to take more pictures. So again, tap the button here to see what pictures you've taken and then the back button to get out of it and go back to the camera. These are the main two functions that you'll wanna use, the photo and video. If you wanna take really nice cinematic pictures, you can go to the portrait mode just by sliding over like that. And I can put one thing in my shot just like this. And I can take a really cool picture where it's going to just focus on the main subject and it's going to blur out the background. Let me slide it over so you can see it better. So you'll see I have my uh, green little leaf here and we're gonna take that picture by tapping the white button. And now if I tap my button to review, you can see that the green section the, of the leaf is lit up and then it blurs out the background of the picture. So you'll see the background here is blurry and blurry. Now this feature primarily works the best if you're taking a picture of someone and you want that person to be in view and you want their background to be blurry, um, that's when you would use the portrait setting. Okay, the next thing I wanna show you how to do is how to save a contact to your phone. So if there's someone important in your life and you know you'll be calling that person a lot, you wanna go to the phone app and you wanna go over to contacts 
or actually uh, this is the easiest way to do it. I want to make sure I make this as simple as possible. Just type in the phone number, go to the phone, make sure you're on keypad and let's type in the phone number. Okay. After you've typed in the phone number, tap the plus at the top of the phone here and it will ask you, do you want to create a new contact? Hit create a contact and here you'll have this pop-up that'll ask you, hey, do you want to save it to the phone or to your Google account? Always, always, always save it to your Google account. That way, if you ever lose your phone, your contacts will be backed up in the cloud under your email address. All you have to do is sign in on your new phone with that Google account and all your contacts will automatically load on the new phone. That's a pro tip for you. Let's name this contact um, Joe... Joe the third, just to put a random name in there. If you tap where it says mobile, you can change it and select what the number is for. So by default, it saves to mobile, but you can say this is his home number. So I'm going to make that the home. And then you can also tap the plus to add another phone number. If you like, you can tap on email if you want to add their email address. Um, you can tap the view more button to add additional information. So maybe you want to add their home address, how you know them, maybe some notes about how you met them or a website they have or a social media account. You can also designate a special ringtone for that person by tapping here. So every time that person calls you, um, you can have it uh, play a certain sound. So you will always know it's that person. So this is the default sound, but I'm just gonna come down here and select a different option. So let's say we selected Moon Discovery. Now, I'm just gonna hit the back button up here and I'm going to save it. And now every time this person calls, it's gonna play that ringtone and not the default ringtone. That's how I always know it's that person that's calling. So that's the quickest way to save a contact to your phone. And I just want to show you, I want to go back to text messages really quickly. If I create a new text message and I type in Joe, Joe is going to come up right here and I can just select his name and now I can send him a message. So that's how you send a message to a contact that you've already saved in your phone. Stay tuned for more videos. Uh, and check out these other two videos on the screen here. You'll find some other really cool information. Take care, and as always, have a good one.